Hi, Gorge. <laughs> Let's read some vampire books this week, shall we? So, here I am. I'm delivering. I'm doing the video that I said I would. I know I don't always do that, but I'm doing it now. I have good motivation for it because it's Halloween and I love Halloween. And it's been Halloween for um, about a month and a half for me, even though it's not even October yet. But regardless, join me now that it's finally going to be October at the end of this week. By the time you watch this video, it's basically Halloween. This week, I'm going to be reading solely vampire books. I'm going to be focusing on books that feature vampires as main characters, as the main story. So something like A Discovery of Witches, books like that. They have a lot of um, paranormal creatures in it, which I've already read that book, but like, I'm not talking about those kinds of books. So let me share with you my TBR that I have compiled. At first, my TBR was looking a little bit sparse. So I asked you guys on Instagram for some recommendations and I got quite a number of good ones um, and of books I've already read so I'm also going to share some vampire books that I love that are worth recommending to you that I won't be reading in this video but you should know that you should read them or shouldn't I will also include but TBR first the first one and I'm going to try and finish this today um, is A Dower of Blood by S.D. Gibson this is kind of what burst this video idea I was reading it a couple weeks ago and I uh, saved it to finish now for this week so I can have the full vibes and I'm a still physical reader so um, it's helpful to add this into the video um, already being halfway through so that I actually can finish something in this video. This book, my god, I'm halfway through it, page 250, uh, no, dyslexia, two, no, <laughs> 125! Oh my gosh. Can you see why it takes me so long to read physical books? <laughs> Anyways, this book is so good. Like, do you even understand how good this book is? I think that it is getting a new cover or it already has gotten a new cover, so it might look different if you go and buy it. Obviously, this cover is superior, okay? I think it reflects far better what's inside the book. And what's inside the book is just literally magic. The writing, so beautiful. The prose, the style of writing perfectly reflects the story and it's exactly what the story needs. Also, the pace of the storytelling is literally perfect. It is a short book, but I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything so far. With how good the first half was, I there's literally like it can only go up from here, I think, and I think it will. It's just magnifique. This is a reimagining of Dracula's Brides. Also, the tone of writing perfectly matches the passage of time and like the quality of like being a vampire and like how decades pass and it's just all perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna finish that one and so that tomorrow when I go out to go to school, I can go to the bookstore and buy Carmilla, which is a recommendation from Instagram, which I feel like I'd heard of before, but I just had not been thought of it in ages. It's a classic vampire book that predates Dracula. So I think yes, ma'am. <laughs> Lady vampires? Sapphic I heard vampires? Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> so I will finish that today hopefully and then read that Carmilla tomorrow, which is only 100 pages and it also has audiobooks. So if I need that, then there's that. But I think I'm going to try and read it physically since it's so short. So other books on my TBR, which I'm less sure of after Carmilla what, what I'll read next, will gauge the vibes, but um, Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff, which I have right here. Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. I got the, this came out last year and I got it last year. Um, UK cover is far superior, but look at this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This? Yeah. Yeah. And it's all throughout the book. There's a bunch of pictures. 
Mm -hmm. But yesterday I was doing a lot of work on my computer because I was unwell on Sunday, so I did everything yesterday. I needed something to listen to, so I put on Empire of the Vampire and it was just not... It was not doing it for me. I know. I wanted to love this book so bad, but I will give it a, a better chance another time, but I don't think I'll be reading it this week. It was just boring and kind of crass, but like not in a good way. Felt very masculine energy, maybe. Maybe that's why I didn't like it. Too masculine for me. It kind of felt all over the place, although I did understand what was going on. It was weird. And like, it has all the ingredients for something that I would love, but this just it just wasn't floating my boat. I definitely think I need to give it more time, but I was just not having it yesterday. So I'm gonna put that one on the back burner. You can convince me in the comments to continue reading it if you really love it that much. So I'm thinking Duel with the Vampire Lord by Elise Kova. I read A Deal with the Elf King and I didn't love it. I didn't finish it though. It was a little bit mm, plain, run of the mill. Nothing like super innovative of uh, storytelling. I just stopped reading it one day and I never got back to it, but I do want to finish it one day. And now she came out with this vampire book, so I think it would be good for this video if I'm in the mood for that. We'll see. I have it on Kindle Unlimited, so it's there if I want to read it. Uh, House of Hunger. I got this in the Instagram recommendation. Thank you. This came out today. It's an adult, a human girly, decides to give herself to be like a feeding bag. <laughs> I think that was a terrible description. That's what I understood from, from the synopsis, but we'll see that came out today so maybe i'll also pick it up in the bookstore tomorrow we'll see i, I want to go read some reviews first before i de dedicate myself to reading it i was doing a twilight reread in the middle of summer and i never finished it so maybe i could finish it if i just need an audiobook to put on so that's <laughs> that's on the table vampire diaries i think it would also be fun to read an old vampire book like when vampire books were everybody was writing them besides twilight obviously so vampire diaries i think would be fun and the audiobook is very short so maybe i'll read that and i was just checking the um the, the, the instagram recommendations before i started filming and i forgot that i was reading this book last year <laughs> maybe some of you remember um i got this far and one of my first bookmarks i ever made is in here page 255 wait that's spooky the other book was two, 125 and this is 255 mm. this is a vampire book the lights of prague by nicole jarvis i was really enjoying it but i just again have a hard time physically reading it, it takes me a long time so i could finish this as well this this um this week vampire book very good very atmospheric it's in set in prague there's like this secret sect of vampire killers hunters that are gas lamp lighters so they go around at sunset lighting all of the gas lamps but while they're at it they kill some vampires if they can so that's one point of view in this book and then there's also a female vampire there's some explicit content in this but that's not really what the book is about so good stuff some other recommendations that uh, you guys left that i probably won't read this week but i think that some of you might like i feel like it's gotten really dark in here uh, first is Woman Eating. This book seems very modern. It's about a vampire living in like a studio apartment full of other artists and like trying to pretend she's not a vampire. Something like that. Uh, the Deathless Girls. I forgot what it's about, but it's a YA and um, I don't really read much YA anymore, so maybe one day I'll read it. And The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. This sounds fun but it also seems a little too modern for my my current mood, okay? So I'll put that one on the back burner as well. This next one, I got in the recommendations. So I thought I would give it an honorable mention so that I could shit on it, essentially. Crave by Tracy Wealth. You may or may not know, I read this book last year I'm just gonna link the video that I talked about my feelings in it down below with all of the receipts, all the citations and everything, okay? Give it a watch. And then once you've watched that, you will know, don't read this book. <laughs> if you're really intrigued, don't buy it. Get it from the library or something. It's just a no. It's a hard no. Should be a no for you too. It was definitely trying to virtue signal, um, but it just ended up feeling a little racist, so. <laughs> I read it because I wanted a bad fun time. I thought it would be that, but it was not that. 
Mm -mm. But speaking of a bad fun time, let's talk about some vampire books that I've read and would recommend, but it kind of depends. This next one, King of Battle and Blood by... Oh, it's too far away. King of Battle and Blood by Scarlet St. Clair. This is basically smut and a little bit of plot. This is by no means good, okay? Not at all. But I did have a fun time reading it, okay? It was a fun trash time. It was just, okay, I enjoyed myself. This is a romance fantasy, as I kind of just said. There were many plot holy problemos, but whatever. It's about vampires, it has smut. What more could I ask for, okay? So if you're in that kind of mood, it's a vampire book. I wanted to mention Twilight. What would a vampire video be without mentioning Twilight? Okay. I don't know why so many people are gagged, gooped over sparkly vampires. Like, that's not so crazy in vampire lore. Okay? Get over it. And like, yeah, it's cringy bad book, but like it's a modern YA take. It's, it's for teenagers. It's not meant to be analyzed with a very close critical literature lens, you know? It's fun time. And I think that sometimes people, it goes over their head. I just thought I would mention for the girlies that don't get it, the girlies that love it, we know that it's not objectively good. Like, by no means do, are we convinced of that. Mm, unless, no, I'm kidding. It's a specific brand of humor and it's honestly a very camp thing. And the first movie is just vibes, like it's, artistry <laughs> like i'm being half sarcastic but at the same time i'm like very serious okay it's become such a comfort thing for a lot of us and like if you know you know okay i don't know what else to tell you lastly let us talk about my favorite vampire book and the one that i definitely recommend you definitely have to like sit down and dedicate some time and brain power to it but interview with a vampire by anne rice i read these i think last year or the year before what a legend she is, honestly. These books, so good. Very deep vampire lore, very gothic vibes. It's honestly quite different than the movies, if you've seen the movies, but they're, just, they're so worth reading. Just, I think I'd probably watch one of those movies this week though. And I was thinking of reading the books about Marius this week, but I felt like at that point I already had too much on my TBR, so. Oh, I also forgot to mention Vampire Academy, duh. This was like my OG vampire book, I think. Those books were my shit. Like, I was obs I read all the books. I read the spin-off series, Bloodlines, as well. Like, it's very young adult, even though it doesn't have very young adult themes in it, but it's written very for ad young adults. Now that I'm older, the, um, some of the things in it, like the teacher-student romance, ma'am please but i it, it was just a book of its time i think and i did a reread last year no year before at some point i did a reread kind of recently and honestly it is what it is but i was like really a vampire academy girly in my youth and i know that they did a remake uh show recently and it just came out or is coming out and i just I just, I don't really have an interest in watching it. People really need to stop with the remakes. Like, we don't need this. It has already been made into a movie. There are far better books to be turning into shows and movies. Like, we just don't need this. Not not a book that glorifies an underage student and a old adult teacher romance. No, no. I don't think we need it, okay? And maybe it's just me, but I think the generation that loved Vampire Academy has moved on, has left this long in the past. Anyways, so that's the plan. Thank you for listening. This took so long. <laughs> I just have a lot to say about vampire books. But let's now go and read uh, A Dower of Blood. Enjoy the video.
gorgeous news i was just reading i'm almost done and i got an email class is cancelled for tomorrow <laughs> gorgeous yep yeah, mm -hmm. well not gorgeous for my teacher she seems unwell but i think i still will go out tomorrow because i want to go to the new york public library to see the exhibition that's there it's like an ever-changing ex exhibition and right now they have winnie the pooh stuffed animals that i really want to see so i figured i'd go and so then i'll go to the bookstore around there yep the vibes are immaculate besties they really are This is a great playlist, except for the end. Nor, ma'am. Nor, ma'am. Not the singing. Nor.
Okay, literally what the heck, what's today? <laughs> so everything that I specifically went out to do today, I couldn't do, <laughs> couldn't get. I went to the New York Public Library because I wanted to see that exhibition before it changed out. <laughs> I just missed it. They are currently in the moment of changing things out. <laughs> It's like an ever-changing exhibition at the New York Public Library. It opened, I think, last year, but every so often they change out stuff in there, which is very fun. But not, <laughs> not fun for you today. But before that, I went to book off just to see if I could find the Vampire Diaries for like a dollar. Couldn't find it. Maybe it was there, maybe I was just blind, but it's a used bookstore, so I didn't expect it to ha have Carmilla. But I at least thought they would have Vampire Diaries. I'll just end up reading that on audiobook. And then I went to Kinokuniya because I needed um, some pens. My favorite pen is almost running out. This is my favorite pen, the Sarasa. I know it's a bit basic. Everybody loves this pen. This is 0 0.5, but I think I bought 0 0.7. Whoops, this is running out. This is my favorite uh, pen for my planner or if I'm writing a lot of stuff. <laughs> Anyways, I expected Kinokuniya to have Carmilla because it's a classic, right? Isn't it? But they didn't have that. And I also checked to see if they had Vampire Diaries. They also didn't have that. I like came out to get this book. So let me go and check Barnes & Noble. I walked all the way over there and Barnes & Noble did not have Carmilla. And that Barnes & Noble, I feel like he's usually very well stocked, but they didn't have it. The Barnes & Noble in Union Square has it. So I'll just get it tomorrow when I go to school. But <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. that was very funny very sad like what am i living in capitalist america for if they don't have what i want i'm joking of course i used to love getting these for rocky but i put myself on a ban because i just shouldn't be buying these all the time he doesn't even like them <laughs> i am so sorry <laughs> Oh my god, no, wait. I have an even better idea. I'm sorry, here. There you go. <laughs> okay, anyways. The only book that I got at the, for the whole day after going to three bookstores is this one. Breaking Dawn Mass Market Paperback Movie Tie-In Edition Cover. For a dollar. <laughs> Did I need it? No. Was I willing to pay a dollar? I was, <laughs> so I did. Love, maybe I'll start collecting these. No, I don't need anything more else to collect. <laughs> Stop me now. Oh my gosh, I nearly knocked down the freaking. <laughs> Whoa. Just now when I was on the train back home, trying to be like, what should I read next then since I don't have Carmilla today? Should I finish The Lights of Prague? or start Vampire Diaries audiobook? Or should I save that audiobook for a time when I really need an audiobook? And then I remembered, I literally forgot to mention a book yesterday that I specifically bought for this Vampire Week. Solita by Vivian Rain. I think this is a vampire book. I honestly don't know. It doesn't s explicitly say vampire. There's like a decaying hacienda and Sadie Starling Passiona. Can you hear that beeping? Sometimes like New York City sound, I don't realize it in the moment when I'm talking. And then like later when I edit, I'm like, girl there were like five ambulances out there how did you not notice that but then she like uncovers i think a vampire underneath her house that's been like locked away for ages so i should just mention it because i think it takes place in i don't at first i thought it was mexico because i heard hacienda but then it it starts with port cante philippines i don't know but <laughs> isn't this such a beautiful little book too gorge this is also on the tbr but i think i might save it for the end of the week i don't know honestly i feel so hyper i don't know what to read next but a dowry of blood God, what an amazing book definitely one of my favorite books of the year okay let's have a good reading you know what i have to do my homework for tomorrow i have to do some reading so i'm gonna go skim those so that i can kind of know what i'm doing tomorrow
damn book.
just finished Carmilla. Sorry if you can hear uh, New York City sounds, but I like having my window open because it's so cold. Honestly, my hands are kind of freezing, but it, it's worth it, okay? <laughs> Is it just me or have Target blankets this year gotten way thinner? I know it's not just me because I pulled out my blanket from last year and it's way thicker. Target capitalism, please. <laughs> I finished Carmilla. It was very good. I really enjoyed it. Very spooky, very atmospheric. It was originally published in 1872. It predates Dracula. I'm a little confused because when I did a little skim of the reviews, they're like, oh my god, sapphic vampire lesbian story, yeah. Um, and now that I've read it, I didn't get that. Is it just my heterosexual society that I live in or my modern understanding of uh, vampire lore? <laughs> I feel like vampires are very seductive creatures regardless of um, like romantic feelings. I feel like it's always number one about blood and about control and I feel like that's what this was showing. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't really read it that way but I, I'm sure it'll deliver for you if that's what you're looking for but overall I really enjoyed it and it was very short and that's nice. <laughs> So after this, I don't know what I'm gonna read. I was listening to the Vampire Diaries audiobook and it's very dated, it's kind of funny. So I don't know what I'm going to read next. Maybe I should try House of Hunger or <laughs> what else is on the TBR, let me check. Or maybe I'll finish Twilight because I've done so many reads of Twilight but if you look at my Goodreads, I've only read it like once <laughs> fully. All those rereads, I stop at the meadow scene. I don't want to read the meadow scene, anything past it. That's not the vibe for me. <laughs> just the monotony of the beginning of Twilight is what I love. I just love routine and it's so comforting for me. So yeah, I, maybe I should just finish that audiobook. I'm not really feeling any motivation to finish Vampire Diaries. Um, I know that's not what the name of the first book is, but I'm just going to call it that. Oh, and I also want to finish Lights of Prague, so I might listen to the audiobook now because I think there's an audiobook and I think it's on Scribd. I have a link for Scribd. Not sponsored, but I wish it was. Maybe I'll finish Lies of Prague. I've read this, the whole thing up until this point physically. When I start a book physically, I like to finish it physically so that I can say that I read this book physically, but at this point of Lies of Prague, I think I just need to listen to it. Not that it's a bad book or anything. It's quite good. <laughs> it's quite the vibes, but yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go do that, and I'm freezing! I stopped reading it <laughs> because the main male character was being very mm, dumb bitch male you know so not not to any fault of the author she's just she, like, she's just writing males in their truest form being dumb bitches I appreciate her for that but it's so frustrating that's my reading update <laughs> It's like painful to get through. It's like, use your brain a little bit, okay? I know that you're just like a stupid male, but like, hello, anybody in there? <laughs> Just a 